making mistakes. <laughs>
In clinical studies, this group of 43 students would be called the placebo group, or in short, group P. A critical point for enabling a large cohort of students to make design-build test experiences at an individual level is the quick manufacturing of parts. Therefore, our students were instructed to build their design products entirely with help of 3D printers. Last year's assignment had been to design a dispensing device for M6 nuts. That can be mounted on a multi-copter. And the hole should be not too heavy, of course, to be able to lift off. First of all, we were interested in the students' feedback on their learning achievement. Where do they get it mainly from? Does it come from the teacher? Or from the grades that the teacher gives them? Do students get most feedback from their peers? Or are they somehow able to deduce how well they've done from observing the product they've designed in operation. Therefore, we ask the participants of our study to rank those sources of feedback. Both groups were asked, the active group and the placebo group. Both groups put feedback from their peers in silver position and feedback from the grading in bronze position of the ranking. But the study groups fundamentally disagree on the other two sources of feedback. While the placebo group, where the students only designed their products on paper but did not get the opportunity to build and test them, attributes the most important for giving feedback to the teacher and places product feedback aside of the podium. The active group swaps positions. Students that were also able to test their products state that teachers do not at all play the leading role. Instead, they indicate that the best feedback they got comes directly from the product. But what do our students think about the quality of the feedback? And is this opinion affected by the learning approach they worked with? Let's find out. For this reason, we ask the participants to rate the quality of the feedback on a psychometric scale. The corresponding values on that Likert type scale were reaching from 1, meaning that the feedback was very good, to 5, indicating insufficient feedback. Let's have a look at the average ratings from the placebo group and the active group. The effect of the learning approach can be studied by looking at the differences between the two groups. We denote these differences by the Greek uppercase letter delta. In order to discern the differences better, the delta scale is enlarged. So, let's look at the results. The interesting thing is that there's nearly no difference between the two groups P and A for the feedback from the teacher, from the peers and from the grading. But the direct product feedback stands out in either way. Students having built and tested the products they've designed assess the direct product feedback significantly to be better compared to those who have not had the opportunity, corresponding to a delta of 1.3. Moreover, direct product feedback also attains the best result in absolute terms. It has an average of 1.6 on the scale. The second complex of questions dealt with mistakes.
We asked our students about mistakes they made and lessons they've learned. To keep it short, the results did not differ significantly between the two groups. But asking someone directly about own mistakes naturally puts the person into a dilemma. On one hand, you do not wish to detract from your achievements in the project. On the other hand, you want to present yourself as a reflective thinker. The answers were perhaps more guided by compliance pressure than by a reflection on the learning process. Therefore, we asked our students to enumerate up to three concrete examples of what went wrong in their designs, to what defects this design fault led, and how they rectified the problem. This indirect question gave us a perfect metric. We just had to count the number of fields filled in by the students. And the quantitative differences are evident. 1.7 cases in average were filled in by the placebo group and more than three times as much answers corresponding to 5.7 cases by the active group. In conclusion of our comparative survey, we would like to point out that we could show that students who did pure paperwork in their design projects have cultivated a rather teacher-centered conception and learning feedback, even if their projects are based on real-world problems and involve project management. Our results also suggest that this teacher-centrism is hard to break up in student design projects, if not a product is built physically and tested, whereas students with design build test experiences generally accept that their teachers step back a little from the limelight and students then appreciate direct product feedback instead. And that means they've developed a deeper self-regulatory reflection on the functioning of their product. Essentially, it's simple. If you build products and test them, it's much easier to compare if they work, how well they perform, or if there is an easier solution than the one that you have found. Another finding of the study is that direct answers about own mistakes are rather governed by what the respondent thinks that the questioner desires to hear than by implications from the learning context. But indirect question techniques reveal interesting insights. Students that have also built and tested products can tell what went wrong and what could be made better. Thanks for listening. And if you want to have more details on our study, go and read the complete paper. And we would feel very pleased if our findings could back up your work somehow.